In this video, I will go over the risk factors to urinary tract infections, describe the clinical presentations of the upper versus lower urinary tract infections, and then finally discuss the treatment options that are available in general population versus pregnant patients. So urinary tract infection is most commonly caused by E. coli, and then after that, the second most common cause is Staphylococcus saprophyticus, and then after that, Klebsiella is the third most common cause of urinary tract infection. So the reason E. coli is number one is that E. coli is abundant in the fecal matter. And given that the anus and the urethra are in close proximity, then there is a higher chance of ascending infection from E. coli. You should also note that the sexual intercourse is another risk factor to the development of the urinary tract infection, and thus it's recommended for females to urinate after sex to help flush out the bacteria that could have got close to the urethra during the sexual intercourse. So here I have provided some tips on how to prevent the urinary tract infection in females. So one, urinate after sex. Two, drink plenty of water to enhance frequent urination. Three, do not hold urine for too long. Four, avoid hygiene sprays as well as condoms that have spermicides and the reason for that is that they can disturb the normal microbial flora and thus enhance the urinary tract infections. Five, after the bowel movement, you must wipe from front to the back and the reason for that is that if you do from back to front, then you will spread the bacteria, the particularly the E. coli, from the anus towards the urethra. While if you wipe from front to the back, then that would prevent bacteria to get in close proximity to the urethra. Six, drinking cranberry juice as well as vitamin C supplements can help acidify the urine and prevent urinary tract infections. And finally, seven, avoid bathing and take showers instead, as bathing can enhance the spread of bacteria to the urethra. So back to the image that I have here. Next, I would like to differentiate in the clinical presentation of the upper versus lower urinary tract infections. So lower urinary tract infection affects the um, bladder and it's referred to as cystitis, while the upper urinary tract infection is referred to the infection of the kidney and is called pyelonephritis. So patients with the lower urinary tract infection or infection of the bladder generally present with dysuria, frequency, urgency, suprapubic pain, as well as white blood cell count of more than 5 to 10 on high power field of the microscopic examination. And then finally, you can see blood in the urine. Now, if the infection from the bladder ascends via the ureters to the kidney, it can cause pyelonephritis, which can present with all of the symptoms that I've just listed here, in addition to the fever, flank pain, costo vertebral angle tenderness on physical examination, nausea, and vomiting, as well as the white blood cell casts on urine examination. So I just want to remind you that we can have different types of casts on urine examination. As I just discussed, white blood cell casts can be seen in patients with pyelonephritis, red blood cell casts in patients that have the nephritic syndrome and then we can have granular or muddy brown casts in patients that have acute tubular necrosis. So back to the topic here, we can have white blood cell casts in patients that have pyelonephritis, but none of the symptoms that I've just listed here for pyelonephritis in pink color is seen in patients with cystitis, while the symptoms of cystitis can all be present in patients with pyelonephritis. And then you can use urine analysis for the diagnosis. So for the urine analysis, you can look at the leukocyte esterase as well as the nitrate. So leukocyte esterase, as the name implies, leukocyte is coming from white blood cells. So if the urine is positive for leuco leukocyte esterase, then it means that these patients have a count of more than 10 white blood cells. While if it's positive for nitrite, nitrite is coming from the gram-negative bacteria, then it's suggesting that more than 100,000 gram-negative bacteria 
are present in the uh, urine. So more than 100,000 colony forming units. And then finally, you can do the culture to find out how much bacteria is there. And patients that have urinary tract infection are having more than 100,000 colony forming unit per mil. For the treatment of these patients, those that have cystitis can be treated with sulfamethoxide, trimetoprim, and those that have pyelonephritis can be treated with ciprofloxacin. So I should mention that you only treat urinary tract infection if the patient is symptomatic. So if on examination of urine analysis, you see that the patient have urinary tract infection, but the patient denies any symptoms of, for instance, burning or urination or frequency or dysuria, then you do not need to treat it. But if they are symptomatic, then you can start treating with the medications that I've listed here. The exception that if the patient is even asymptomatic, you have to treat them with antibiotics is during pregnancy. And the reason for that is that the, during pregnancy, there is a ureteral dilation, which increases the risk of the pyelonephritis it's because the um, bacteria can ascend from the bladder to the kidney due to the ureteral dilation. So if a pregnant patient is asymptomatic, but on urine analysis, you see that there is signs of infection, then you will have to treat them. And for the treatment during pregnancy, you cannot use either fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin because they can cross the placenta and cause fetal cartilage damage. And then Sulfamethoxide trimetoprim as well can cross the placenta and sulfonamides compete with the bilirubin for binding to albumin and then it can increase the uh, levels of bilirubin in the fetus blood and cause kernicterus which damages the neural structures. So for the treatment of the urinary tract infection during pregnancy you have four choice of medications that you can use and these include phosphomycin, amoxicillin, nitro, furantoin as well as the cephalexin so you can use the memory aid fancy to help remember these drugs f for phosphomycin a for amoxicillin n for nitrofurantoin and then c for cephalexin so fancy and that concludes our discussion